Look, for a lot of people, it's like, what on earth is this all about? Why on earth do I care? Well, certainly we know that Nicola Sturgeon cares. She's called this a full frontal attack on the democratically elected Scottish Parliament. But I think you and I would see this original act as a full frontal attack on biological fact and women's safety. Let's start from the beginning. What did Scotland vote, the Scottish Parliament, actually vote for? What would that their gender reform bill actually have done? They voted to change the UK's Gender Recognition Act to allow uh, gender recognition certificates, which change your sex for all legal purposes, to be issued in Scotland on a different basis. So um, to be issued to children from the age of 16 instead of 18 um, and to reduce the time that someone has to show that they've been living in a gender uh, and also importantly to remove uh, any medical assessment. So currently in the UK, if you want to change your legal sex, you have to have two doctors um, assessments and they were they want they have uh, voted to remove all of that. Uh, but as you say, Alistair Jack has said no. And I mean, this law would basically mean that any man or woman, but the concern has been about men um, specifically being able to use this, uh, not not men who have genuine gender dysphoria, who who who, who want to live a perfectly you know, peaceful and happy life uh, as the opposite gender. And no one has any issue with people what, changing their names or wearing what they want to wear and living their life as they choose. The concern is about really is about sexual predators exploiting this law so basically say oh i'm now a woman and well, uh, and no one having any say no 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 treatment no no medical advisors no nothing at all and and then being able to gain access to the safe spaces that women have and have been in existence for years to protect women so changing rooms toilets prisons refuges and others which are there deliberately to protect women from predatory men yes absolutely that's that is one of the concerns um it's also just the numbers. Um, yeah. So, you know, if you make it much easier for people to change their legal sex, there may be all kinds of reasons that people will want to do this. Yeah. Um, you know, people who would previously have been called transvestites, for example, um, they may not be sexual predators, but that doesn't mean that women want to undress with them. No. Um, and, you know, if you're giving away 10 times as many, 50 times as many of these certificates, it just becomes much, much harder for anyone to feel confident that they can run a single sex service or a separate sex service. So, you know, workplace toilets, showers, really everyday situations. Girls' schools, even. And, I mean, schools, and girls' absolutely. toilets in, in mixed schools. I mean, this is the thing, it would have an impact because you have a situation where somebody who, under England, I mean, this is particularly Great Britain, Northern Ireland is different, but in England and Wales, where somebody would be clearly a biological man, so a man um, uh, who is legally recognised as a man because that is what he is, um, but in Scotland has changed his legal gender. You can't change your sex. You can say you say you can't change your sex. You're born what you're born to being a, a, a trans woman to being a legally a woman. That that man crosses the border and is claiming to be a woman. And if that, but but actually is still a man legally under British law. You get into a whole heap of confusion and difficulty and I think, you know, problems and upset for both that person and indeed the women who perhaps don't want that that uh, that male body in their changing room or, or, or in their girls' toilet at the school. Um, was the government right to strike this down? I got the impression that while Nicola Sturgeon says this is all part of the culture war from the Tory government and an attack on the Scottish independence and the like, devolution, but, but actually it seems to me that when that law was was changed in Scotland, that Rishi Sunak just went, oh, God, I'm going to have to get involved. And they sort of reluctantly done this on, you know, clear legal grounds because it's about, you know, the, what, what rights the Scotland has to basically effectively change equality laws across the whole of the UK, um, which it doesn't have the right to do so. Um, but do, do you think that, the you know, the British government did the right thing, but did they do it for the right reasons? Um... Yes, I think they did. I mean, the, the Scotland Act includes um, these provisions to make sure that the devolution works. And um, this is one of those situations where the UK government should step in because Scotland has legislated in a way that will have adverse effects on legislation that affects the whole of the UK. The whole of the UK and the UK Parliament did not vote for self-ID, um, but this would bring in self-ID by the back door and that would have 
adverse impacts, particularly on the Equality Act, but also on freedom of speech. And those are issues for the whole of the UK, not, not for Scotland. Um, but also, I mean, at the same time, uh, the Education Secretary here has said she thinks that children should be able to change their legal sex at 16. So there are, while Rishi may be doing the right thing for the right reasons, uh, his Education Secretary yeah. is, um, or, you know, supporting the same kind of move that Scotland well, is making. Usefully, we're going to be talking to her next. Um, uh, any question Please specific that you'd like me to ask her then? Ask her whether she thinks uh, children should be able to change their sex and should whether boys should be um, allowed to be uh, enrolled into girls' schools. Yeah, these are simple questions. It's quite bizarre in uh, 2023 that we're having to ask these questions, isn't it? I, I don't know what happened to the world.